Acute Care Nurse Assistant, Module 15, Death and Dying. Content 1, Basic Terminology, including the terminology and clinical setting application. Content 2, Cultural Differences in Death Rights, Common Ethnic Groups in Service Area, Specific Death Rights. Content 3. How to communicate with a terminally ill patient and significant others. Active listening. Serve as a sounding board for the patient and family. Don't negate hope or support false hope. Patients and families need to have hope. It is therapeutic, but also need to prepare for the possibility of loss and death. There are no magic answers. Just listening provides the patient or family with a means to express their feelings. Listen. Make eye contact. Show that you appreciate their feelings, not that you know how they feel. You don't know unless you've been there. Help to decrease their feelings of guilt. Protect the dying person's rights. Content 4. Provide post-mortem care. Equipment, procedure, belongings, and transport. Module 15. Definitions. Advanced Directive. An advanced directive is a written or verbal communication that allows individuals to make their wishes known if they become unable to speak for themselves. There may be two components to an advanced directive. One, appointment of a surrogate decision maker, and two, instructions for future healthcare treatment decisions. In California, the specific term now used in state law is the Advanced Healthcare Directive, AHCD. Living Will a living will is a type of advanced directive that specifies one's treatment wishes if he or she becomes permanently unconscious or suffers from a terminal illness. Despite this specific definition, the term living will is often used generically, especially by the general public, to refer to any advanced directive document. Durable Power of Attorney for Healthcare until 2000, this was the main advanced directive document used in California. Its primary purpose was to designate a surrogate decision maker who could act on behalf of an individual unable to make his or her own health care decisions. This function is now a component of California's advanced health care directive. Hospice Hospice programs care for those facing a life-threatening illness who have a prognosis of six months or less and are willing to forego curative treatment. Using a team approach, services include expert pain and symptom management, as well as emotional and spiritual support tailored to the needs of the patient and family. Palliative care. Palliative care addresses patients' symptoms and associated suffering, including physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual pain. Unlike hospice, palliative care is not limited to patients who are terminally ill and can be provided simultaneously with curative treatment. Terminal care for various ethnic and religious groups. A number of research studies have shown inequities in end-of-life care related to specific ethnic groups. Ethnic minorities have reduced access to palliative care or symptom control. The opportunity to die at home or hospice care and pain control. There are many reasons for these inequities, which include preference for aggressive medical care rather than dying at home, mistrust of medical professionals, discrimination, communication barriers, and even the decision-making style of the minority family. It is important for caregivers to attempt to understand and respect cultural, religious, and ethnic preferences as related to the patient's care. When spiritual needs are addressed, Patient and family morale and confidence that they are in capable hands is increased. General themes among most religions are that families perform rituals to foster the passage of the deceased to God or into another life. The stronger the beliefs, the more dedicated is the family in completing specific rituals, practices, and prayers. It is important to recognize that the great world faiths have been mentally and spiritually preparing for death much longer than the modern scientific establishment. Regardless of the faith or culture, respect is given to the body after death. The table below provides some general guidelines, 
though asking the patient and family their preference is always preferred and more reliable. Please study the charts on this and the following pages as to the ethnic groups, their general beliefs and preferences, and post-mortem and after-death preferences. Attitudes Toward Death and Dying Survey participants were asked to rank five concerns about death and dying on a four-step scale, ranging from not concerned at all to very concerned. Although the majority of Californians are concerned about all aspects of death and dying, pain and discomfort tops the list for those who are somewhat or very concerned. Concerns About Death and Dying, 2006 when you think about death and dying, how concerned are you about the dying person's Bill of Rights? I have the right to be treated as a living human being until I die. I have the right to maintain a sense of hopefulness, however changing its focus may be. I have the right to be cared for by those who can maintain a sense of hopefulness, however changing this might be. I have the right to express my feelings and emotions about my approaching death in my own way. I have the right to participate in decisions concerning my care. I have the right to expect continuing medical and nursing attention, even though cure goals may be changed to comfort goals. I have the right not to die alone. I have the right to be free from pain. I have the right to have my questions answered honestly. I have the right not to be deceived. I have the right to have help from and for my family, accepting my death. I have the right to die in peace and dignity. I have the right to retain my individuality 
and not be judged for my decisions, which may be contrary to the beliefs of others. I have the right to discuss and enlarge my religious and or spiritual experiences, regardless of what they may mean to others. I have the right to expect that the sanctity of the human body will be respected after death. I have the right to be cared for by caring, sensitive, knowledgeable people who will attempt to understand my needs and will be able to gain some satisfaction in helping me face my death. Giving Postmortem Care Assemble Equipment A Shroud or Clean Sheet A Basin with Warm Water Washcloth Towels, Disposable Gloves, Identification Tags, Cotton Bandages, Pads as Needed Put on the disposable gloves. Remove all appliances, tubing, and used articles if instructed to do so. Work quickly and quietly, maintaining an attitude of respect. With the bed flat, place the body on the back with head and shoulders elevated on a pillow. Close the eyes by grasping the eyelids, gently pulling the eyelids down and holding shut for a few seconds. Replace dentures in the patient's mouth if used. Replace an artificial eye if used. The jaw may have to be secured with light bandaging or a chin strap. Pad beneath the bandage. Handle the body gently, as tight bandaging or undue pressure from your hands may leave marks. Straighten the arms and legs and place arms at their sides. Bathe as necessary. Remove any soiled dressings and replace with clean ones. Groom hair. Place a disposable pad underneath the buttocks. If the family is to view the body, Put a clean hospital gown on the patient. Cover the body to the shoulders with a sheet. Remove disposable gloves and wash your hands. Make sure the room is neat. Adjust the lights to a subdued level. Provide chairs for the family and allow the family to visit in private. Return to the patient's room after the family leaves. Wash your hands and put on disposable gloves. Collect all belongings and make a list. Wrap them properly and label them. Valuables will remain in the hospital safe until they are signed for by a relative. Fill out the identification cards or tags in the morgue kit and attach them as follows. Place one card on the right ankle or right great toe. Attach one card to the bag with the patient's valuables. Put a shroud on the patient and attach an identification card or tag to the outside. Call an elevator to the floor and keep it empty. Close patient corridor doors. Empty the corridor. With an assistant, place the body on a gurney. Use a morgue gurney if available. Keep the patient supine with a rubber head elevator under the neck. Cover the body with a sheet. Remove disposable gloves and discard according to facility policy. Wash your hands. Take the body to the morgue. Attach one identification card or tag to the morgue compartment. Thank you for your attention.